I always like to go up the wall or the side of the door jam with some sealant as well. Put a nice fat bead out on the front and then just give me a nice serpentine bead here in the back. I think so. Easy peasy. So now you can see the purpose of these blocks. So I can put it in by myself. It's kind of it's kind of pushed tight against these blocks on the outside. And I'll just confirm that my bottoms are good. Then it's a matter of plumbing it up and putting the screws in. All right, so the first thing I like to do is, since I know my opening should be consistent, I try to make sure that my space along the bottom is the same. So I'm gonna wiggle this over. And now all I'm gonna do is check the door jam for plumb. Now the nice thing with steel frame is that it doesn't get all wonky, so a wood frame can have some you know, movement to it with the steel frame. Uh, you get the bottom level, plumb up the jam here, and it's gonna be good. And this is saying everything is pretty good. So I'm gonna take a shim and spin that out of my way. I'm gonna put a shim snug right where my fastener is gonna go. I'm not going to over tighten it. I'm just going to snug it up. Check it again. Perfect. I'm going to do the same thing at each screw location, not going super tight because I will open this door up when I'm done with these outside um, screws and put some screws into the jam and I'll come back with an uh, a shim kind of the other way to keep it from kind of warping or twisting the jam. All right, now that the hinge side is done, let's go ahead and do top and bottom of the latch side. That is nice. That opened up nice. Closed nice. What we're looking for is a nice consistent reveal. Now remember I haven't put the screws that go top and bottom middle of this side over here, but everything else looks good. Close is good. Top reveal is good, which means we're not sitting out of plumb. So I'm gonna go put those last couple of screws in and then we'll do the hinge screws. Now you might be asking yourself, those holes on the outside where we're putting screws in, what's gonna stop somebody? Um, well, you could break it, I suppose, but we're gonna have some more screws in the jam, but we go ahead and put these color match plugs in. Um, that way you can adjust the door as need be, because with a post frame, you know, there can be movement over time, you know, over the years, um, we're on a nice solid foundation, but that doesn't mean that you're not gonna have some movement as with all construction wood will move um, so if you got to readjust you can just pull these plugs out and tighten the screw All right, now that the door's installed, we can take those blocks off. And this is a first for me. I picked up this DeWalt oscillating tool. It's nothing new, but it's new to us. It's, uh, one of the brushless, I got it in a kit, but I only had a 12 volt oscillating tool cordless before. And it was great for doing shims and stuff, but I was told that this thing was good. So this is kind of like first trial here. Let's see how she does. I don't want to hit my... I don't want to hit my metal finish. Let's come from this way here. Ooh, really good. 
really good control. It's, you can, I mean, look at this, I can just come in here nice and easy or just go ham on it. Look at that. What do you think about that, Greg? The other thing I noticed when I put this, uh, this blade on, I'll take the battery out real quick, is how simple the quick lock is. Just push down on this lever, stick it in there, and you're, you're good to go. So, yeah, a lot of people said this was a good one to get, and I am probably in agreement. It doesn't feel like it has a ton of speed or power, but very smooth, so good job, DeWalt. You guys don't see me use a ton of DeWalt out here on site. Not for any reason. It's not that I don't like DeWalt. I just am not as invested in it, but... Uh, I couldn't pass this deal up. I had a great deal at Lowe's that I picked it up with a, a drill and driver and pretty good. What do you need me to do? Hold that? How about you clean this end off, you filthy animal? Customers deserve better, dude. Let me just wipe this on this building. Ooh, that's so close. See, we're looking for 107. We're gonna say 107 three quarters. So you can see here where the steel is cut around our fascia. We did a little three quarter cut over and then bent it out so that you've got this lip. Now we can take our fascia, tuck it right over top of that. Yeah, there, that looks good.
what we've done here is made a pocket for our gutter to cap or come into and i cut this long enough so that when the gutter butts up to this face of the trim here water's still going to run into that gutter versus along the edge and down so you're going to have a little bit of water potentially up here on the top of this trim making its way down but at least the gutter will be underneath of this flashing here and uh, it just hides the end of the gutter kind of keeps it looking i think nice and clean looks a little weird right now until we get the gutter on but that's what this is for All right guys, so today wasn't super productive. Didn't even get out here until after lunch. Uh, and believe it or not, me and both Greg and Zach woke up with just a horrible stomach uh, bug, I guess. Not a flu, probably because we ate at the same restaurant yesterday. I'm not gonna say where it was, and it gave us a sickness. So it was a slow start. Greg came out here for a little while with me, but ended up going back home because he didn't feel good. Um, but we got some stuff done. Most importantly, I think I got this door installed. Um, we're waiting on this piece of steel for the ceiling in order to finish up this steel around the door just because we start there and work our way to the corner. Um, we also got the rest of this steel up down this wall here and the hard one, which, well, I say hard, but not too bad. The one that goes up and around this corner here so we got that done we're now ready to go over the top of our roof line right there that guy that's the one that we just got on that went around so now i can figure out where my steel trim goes up above that porch roof but it was dripping too much on us it's still dripping a little bit but looks like almost all the snow is off of that roof one thing you probably noticed is that white thing there that was a nice little gutter Greg tucked it up underneath our trim so we could uh, so we could just at least work underneath there putting that piece up because it was dripping really bad. So needless to say, um, not amazingly productive, but the good news is I think tomorrow we should all be back and we're going to start on that ceiling on the inside. So that's going to be a black ceiling, galvanized wall, and a black wainscot. So it's definitely going to turn out pretty sharp just like this building is turning out uh, as it stands right now. I love the colors and it's really looking good. So make sure you guys stick around for this thing to come to an end. If you haven't already, I'd appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. And if you have, thank you. Make sure you turn that bell on so you get notified every time we drop a new video. Uh, 2020 is already shaping up to be pretty crazy. Got a lot in the books, a lot, a lot we're working on. So I'm excited to share it with you guys and hope you guys come along for the ride. So we'll see you later. Catch you on the next video.